Okay, in the second video, we're going to be looking at some examples of how we can use our knowledge of the quadrilateral hierarchy to solve problems in analytical geometry. So this first question says, given that PQRS is a parallelogram, so they are stating here that it's given to you that you know that the shape is a parallelogram. And they give you the coordinates of PQ and S, but they leave R off the sketch. And they say, well, determine what the coordinates of R are. Now, I don't know how you see this picture, but there might be two possible locations of R. Some of you might think, well, maybe R is up there. And I can get a parallelogram that looks something like that. But maybe R could be down here. And then I could have a parallelogram that looks something like this. So which one is it? Well, the key is in the name here. If they tell you that the quadrilateral is named PQRS, if we look at the order that the letters are named here, it's going to follow the same order, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. So if we go, there's PQ, then we know that R must be the next vertex to follow before ending back up at S to complete the quadrilateral. So we know that R has to lie approximately there somewhere. So now we can go and create a parallelogram. And so now the question is, well, and so now the question is, well, how are we going to know what the coordinates of this point are? If we know it's a parallelogram, then we know the diagonals of this shape will share a midpoint. And so from knowing what S and Q are, I can find the midpoint of SQ. So the midpoint point of SQ, we're going to add our X's, so 0 plus 6, and we're going to divide that by 2, and we add our Y's, 1 plus 1 divided by 2, and therefore we can simplify the midpoint of SQ as a coordinate, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we know the coordinates of the midpoint would be 3 and 1. Now that helps us because we know that M is the midpoint of PR as well. So the midpoint of PR is also 3 and 1 because the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So therefore we can take our x value plus 2 and if we divide it by 2 we're going to get 3. So we're splitting our midpoint formula. x plus 2 divided by 2 must give me the x coordinates of the midpoint. The y value of r plus 3 divided by 2 must give me the y coordinates of the midpoint, 1. So we've created these two little equations here. If we go and solve for x in the first one, we multiply by 2, so we get x plus 2 equals 6. Subtract 2 from both sides, x is equal to 4. If we do the same thing of multiplying by 2 here on both sides, y plus 3 equals 2. Subtract 3 from both sides, y is equal to negative 1. Now be careful, therefore, what are the coordinates of r? r is the coordinates where x is 4, y is negative 1. Now that's a perfectly acceptable way to answer this question. But if I told you that in the test this question is only going to be worth 2 marks, well, then there must be a short way to do this. So I would advise that this is the safer method. If you're not too sure of what I'm going to show you next, Okay, so there's my parallelogram. And instead of using the properties of the diagonals bisecting each other, we know in a parallelogram that the opposite sides are equal to each other and that they are parallel to each other. Now, equal means that those lengths are equal. Parallel means that the gradients are equal. So if I go and think about a very intuitive understanding of gradient to say, well, if I'm going from P to Q, this vertical change is the change in my y values. From 3 to 1, I'm dropping by 2 units. This horizontal change is the change in my x values. So from 2, I'm going to 6, I'm adding 4. Now, not only is that ratio from PQ to the same as that to SR, but the actual rise and run are identical values because those sides are equals. These are like congruent right angle triangles. So here, if I dropped 2, I'm going to drop 2 units there. My change in y is going to be 2 units. 
So from 1, if I take away 2 units down there, I'm going to be at negative 1. My change in my x values, well, I added 4. So I hit cross here, I'm going to take this x value, I need to add 4. 0 plus 4, 4. You could have also looked at the change from Q to R as the same from P to S. So I'll do that in a different color. If you look at going from Q back to R like that, that's going to be the same ratio and the same dimensions as going from P back to S. So once I know here, I would have gone my change in X is negative 2. My change in my Y values is negative 2 as well. So if I take that here from 6 and I take away 2, I'm going to get 4. And if I take away negative 2, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So therefore my coordinates of R are 4 and negative 1 either way. That's why it's only 2 marks. Okay, question 2. Given quadrilateral A, B, C, D, prove that it is a parallelogram. So although this shape looks like a parallelogram, we don't know it's a parallelogram. The question is asking us to prove that it is a parallelogram. So now we have to go and think back to, in the previous video. I discussed that there's five ways to prove this shape is a parallelogram. And we said the easiest by far is to show that the two diagonals bisect each other. Now, in analytical geometry, what tool do we have that talks about bisection is the midpoint. So if we look at the midpoint of the one diagonal, the midpoint of AC, we're going to take the x values, negative 4 plus 3, and we divide it by 2. We take the y values, 1, 1 plus 0, divided by 2. So if we simplify the midpoint of AC, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, divided by 2 is negative 1 half. 1 plus 0 is 1, divided by 2. All right, so let's look at the midpoint of BD. Well, the midpoint of BD, we're going to take the x value of negative 3, add it to 2, and we divide it by 2. We add the y value of negative 2 plus 3, divide it by 2. So the midpoint here, we again get negative 1 divided by 2, negative a half. Here we get negative 2 plus 3, 1 over 2. So therefore, we've shown that the midpoint of AC is equal to the midpoint of BD. Therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram. We can abbreviate that as a palm. Why? Because the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other. We've shown that that's true in this shape. If we didn't get the same midpoint for these two diagonals, well, then it's not a parallelogram. But if we're asking you to prove that it's a parallelogram, then you must get the same midpoint for both diagonals. Okay, question 2b says that prove that ABCD is also a rectangle. So if we remember our quadrilateral hierarchy, we know that a rectangle is a special parallelogram. And it's a special parallelogram where it has a parallelogram with an interior angle of 90 degrees. So can I prove that it's a 90 degree angle between two adjacent sides? Well, in analytical geometry, when we're talking about 90 degree angles, when we're talking about perpendicular, we want to look at the gradient, the gradient of AB, and then we want to see, well, what's the gradient of BC? What's the relationship between perpendicular lines? If we multiply their gradients, we must get negative 1. Now, we can't assume that this is true. We have to show that this is true. So we need to go and work out the gradient of each line independently. So the gradient of AB, we're going to take our A coordinate, Y on top, and then we're going to say, and we're going to subtract our B coordinate. Right, making sure we get a negative value here. So at the top we get positive 3, and at the bottom we get negative 1. So therefore positive 3 over negative 1 is negative 3. So the gradient of AB is negative 3. Right, the gradient of BC. Now we should know, we should be expecting it to be positive 1 over 3, the reciprocal on the opposite sign. 
but we need to go and see if that's true. So if we go and calculate the gradient of BC, we see that on the top we get positive 2, on the bottom we get positive 6, so that we do get positive 1 third. Therefore we know if we multiply the gradient of AB by the gradient of BC, when you multiply 3 by a third you're going to get 1, and a positive times a negative is a negative. So we would get negative 1 as a result. Therefore, in analytical geometry, we know that AB is perpendicular to BC. Therefore, ABCD is a rectangle. Now, the reason why we say it's a rectangle, it's not enough just to say that we've got a 90 degree angle. Quadrilaterals with 90 degrees, they're not all rectangles. We can have kites with a 90 degree anterior angle. So why is this a rectangle? It's because we had a parallelogram with an interior angle equal to 90 degrees. You can write that out in full words, in a full sentence if you want. But you must justify why you said that this is a rectangle. Okay, question three. Again, we've been given a shape here. So we're not asked to prove we know that PQRS is a rhombus. Now, as soon as we tell you that something is a rhombus, you've got to think about what are the properties of a rhombus. What do you know a rhombus has? And in this case, we need to use those properties to try and answer the questions that they've asked. Okay, let's read the first question. Determine the equation of PR. What does PR represent here? Well, this is a line. So we've practiced quite a lot here to find the equation of the straight line. We know the equation of the straight line can be written in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Right? To find the equation, we're looking for the gradient and the y-intercept, the constant. Do we know what the gradient of PR is? Well, we've got both coordinates. So we don't have to worry about the fact that this is a rhombus yet. We know what the coordinates of P and R are. So we can go and find the gradient here using our gradient formula. And we see that we get positive 5 over 5, so the gradient of PR is 1. So therefore, we know the equation of our line is 1 times x plus the constant. How do we find that c value? Well, now we want to substitute a point that lies on the line. Well, we've got two points that lie on the line. So we can choose either r or p. So this says if x is 6, the y value is 3. So 3 is equal to 6 plus a constant. So if I subtract 6, then the constant must be negative 3. Therefore, my equation of pr is y is equal to x subtract 3. Okay, now it's asking us to determine the equation of SQ. Now, this is a far more daunting prospect. Why? Well, I don't know what the coordinates of S or Q are. And furthermore, I can't use my rise and run translation method from before because I have both coordinates unknown. So I don't know what the change in Y and the change in X is from P to Q. And I don't know what it is from R to S. And I can't use that method either. Now we have to go and think about, they told me that this shape is a rhombus. And if I look at the lines I've drawn on the screen here, what do we know about the diagonals of a rhombus? The diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other perpendicularly. In other words, I know that this length is equal to this length. I know that this is equal, and I know that this is 90 degrees. Now, if I'm thinking about the equation of SQ, what do I need to know about the equation of SQ? I need to know the gradient. I don't have the coordinates of S and Q, but I know that the gradient of SQ, it's going to be the reciprocal of the gradient of PR. And from the previous question, we know the gradient of PR was 1. So therefore, the gradient of SQ is going to be negative 1. If we multiply those, we get negative 1. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. So therefore, I know my equation of SQ is going to be y is equal to negative x plus a constant. Now, I need to know a point that lies on SQ. I don't know what S is, and I don't know what Q is. But... I can work out what the midpoint is going to be. Well, the midpoint of RP is going to be the same as the midpoint of SQ. But more importantly, it's a point on the line. So, 
my midpoint of RP. We're going to add our X's, add our Y's. So we know that 7 divided by 2, positive 1 divided by 2. We know that this point, 3 and a half, 1 and a half, and a half, lies on that line SQ. Therefore, I can substitute this point in. So if we substitute... into what we know so far. The y value, a half, is going to be equal to negative 7 over 2, that's my x value, plus a constant. Well, if I take a half and I add 3 and a half, I get 4. So therefore, the equation of sq is negative x plus 4. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Now you need to go and do exercise 5 in your textbook on page 209. The memo is also posted on the NHS Drive, but you must try these questions by yourself first. Good luck.